Hello and welcome to my first video installment of how to build an eBay Partner Network affiliate site from scratch. Um, and we're basically going to take you through the whole process from start to finish. And this particular video is going to cover how to do your niche research so that you can figure out a, a topic that's going to work for you. Um, and hopefully, you know, if you follow this tutorial, you're going to end up with a finished product that looks something like this, and hopefully even better. Um, so, uh, niche research is probably one of the most important things, because if you don't pick a good niche, all the work you do afterwards is basically going to go to waste. And this is something that, you know, it takes a little time. Um, you know, you could, you could be great at putting up websites and whatever, but if you don't know how to do proper niche research, you're not going to get very far. So, um, it's definitely a good idea to pay attention and, you know, try to follow these same steps so that you have a good... Uh, niche to go with uh, throughout the rest of the tutorial and hopefully your finished product is that much better because you put the time and effort into choosing a good niche. So uh, when doing the niche research you find a, you find all kinds of different articles and stuff on this online and uh, you know like there's there's a ton of popular places that uh, you often hear like Google Trends, Tech Mamie, eBay Pulse, etc. Um, now you got to keep in mind we're doing an eBay Partner Network affiliate blog here and we're pushing specifically we're pushing products um, so I think there's no better place to possibly do this with than eBay Pulse. So that's what we're going to use for this practice. And uh, let's head over there right now. The URL is pulse.ebay.com. And let's head over. Okay, this is a home page for eBay Pulse. Um, what you'll see here is a list of the top 10 most popular searches on eBay. Now, this is a good time to talk about some of the good things and some of the bad things we're looking for as, as far as choosing a niche. Now, things you're not going to want to do is choose a topic like iPod or Nintendo Wii or digital camera. Um, now, you could you could go with something like a digital camera because you could really drill down into that niche. But um, you know, these are all incredibly general products and not only that but these have been done a million times I mean there's just absolutely tens of thousands of iPod affiliate sites out there pushing iPods and you could easily throw throw up your own and make it look nice but it's still not going to get you a whole lot of traffic to the site and you know that's really the exact kind of thing you want to avoid during this so uh, the most important thing to avoid when choosing your niche is basically um, these really general products um, it might be tempting but it's you know you just absolutely don't want to go there um, th th some of the things we're looking for as far as choosing a niche is first off we we want a product that is going to have products available on eBay so um, you know you're gonna want something like I said in my article on this um, you know you could choose uh, purple coffee tables is your niche, but and you could probably easy easily get a top ranking for it. But for one thing, it's probably not getting a lot of traffic to begin with. And for another thing, there may be only one or two total selling on eBay, so you could put up a whole site on it, but you're only gonna have two products to push. So that's the kind of thing you want to avoid is. Uh, products that don't have a huge selection on eBay. I mean, you don't need to have a lot, but if you don't have even 50 products, you know, in your niche available on eBay, you're going to want to avoid it. Um, the second thing we're looking for is a little bit more specific niche. Um, now, like I said, these are incredibly general. There's tens of thousands of sites on iPod. Now, if you compare that to the stainless steel water bottle site I showed you, that's a little bit more general of a, of a site. And... Um, you know, even though it's not as, as focused as it could be, it's still a lot more focused. We're not selling all different kinds of water bottles. We'll, we're selling one specific kind of water bottle there. So you're going to want to drill down as, as far as you possibly can into your niche and, you know, find something that's highly targeted. And the reason why is uh, because of the third thing. You want to be able to, to uh, get good rankings. Uh, you want to find a, be able to find a keyword that's going to get you traffic that you can rank for relatively easily. So um, those are basically the three criteria we're looking for as far as choosing a, a niche. Now, um, like I said, these, these top ten, you could throw these out right away. I mean, some of them you could maybe drill down like dr digital camera, but even still, I mean, these these have all been done. So... A uh, nice thing about eBay Pulse is it breaks breaks these top ten lists down into a ton of different categories. So you can pull down this list here, and you'll see all different kinds of categories, all the categories available on eBay. And we can drill into these 
uh, fairly deep and get a more focused niche. Now, it really doesn't matter what you choose here. Um, some of these things are going to be more filled up than others, but uh, you know that's pretty much up to you. Now, for me personally, um, I bought a house about a month ago, and we've been doing all kinds of renovations and fixing things here and there. So, you know, I've I've had home and garden on the brain, and I've also found that through going through this process, um, I've I've learned a lot of new products, and you know, found all kinds of things I never heard of before. And I've actually found about four or five really nice niches just by you know going through the process of doing some home renovations and learning about products I never knew existed. So that's another great tip is to uh you know just keep keep your eyes peeled for for stuff out there you know in your daily life uh, because you never know when it, when you can uh find a great niche you know stumble upon something so anyway i'm going to go to the home and garden category here and see what they have okay now these are the top 10 most popular searches in the home and garden category overall you'll see that these are still pretty pretty vague um and the nice thing is that you can pull down this drop down menu again and you'll see we can go deeper inside to the subcategories of the home and garden category. So I'm going to go ahead and choose inside the home. Okay, now you'll see more stuff like rug, chandelier, pampered chef. Um, so we're getting a little bit farther in there. And you can continue pulling this down, and you'll see that there's even more additional subcategories. So this is a good thing. We want to go far down as possible. I'm going to choose home decor and accents and see what we got okay now let's just pull down yep see this is this means that we can't go any farther into this particular category so this is pretty much what we're dealing with here now uh, when I look at these ten there's some good ones and some bad ones in here um, for example stuff you're gonna want to stay away from would be uh, trademark names like Pottery Barn and Ikea um, you know you don't want to put up a site that's at, you know cheap ikea products dot com um, and the reason is because it's a trademark name now are you gonna get in trouble for for starting a site with a trademark name no not necessarily there's nothing from stopping you from registering a domain like that and putting the site up but um, uh, the bottom line is you know eventually it could come back to bite you so you don't want to put uh, you know a ton of hours into creating a site with a trademark brand name and you know doing the SEO and promoting the site and then you know a year or two down the road you get a letter from IKEA's lawyers telling you to turn the site off and you know these are the kind of things that can happen so is it gonna happen no not necessarily but is it better to go with a general niche where you're not gonna run into those kind of problems yeah of course so I always recommend picking these general niches because you can still sell IKEA products if you have a site about pillows um, you know without having to have their trademarked name in your domain name so that's what I highly recommend now when you get into these uh, deep into these lists here you basically just have to look for something that stands out to you now you could really uh, follow up on a lot of these different things like mirror pillows um, wreath these are these are all things that you could take a look at like wreath for example if you're getting closer to the holidays you might want to do a site on wreaths or whatever um, you're not gonna you're not gonna just say oh pillows I'm gonna do a site about pillows and pop up the site once we once we choose something here we're gonna take it and do some uh, further research on it to try to find a more a for, focus keyword so what I, what I'm gonna go with here is uh, this shabby chic looks a little bit unique to me and not only that but it seems like something that there may be uh, a variety of different sub products within that keyword so I'm gonna take this and we're gonna take it over and do some research on it so the next video is going to discuss uh, what, where we're going to go from here and the type of research we're going to do to find out um, what product within Shabby Chic we're going to use for the rest of this tutorial. So uh, tune in to part two and we'll head over to Google and a couple other keyword research tools and go from there. Okay, thanks.